Hello everyone. Today we are going to uh, work on CATIA part design sample exam for the CATIA certificate. Okay. So as you know, in CATIA, in order to get the associate certification, you need to first pass the part design exam. And then in order to get the uh, professional version, you need to also pass either assembly or surface design as well as the part design and in this video i'm going to work on this sample exam published by the salt system for working on part design and in the next two videos i'm going to work on assembly and surface design so uh i would like you to if you want to get this certificate I would like you to work on these uh, examples, these problems at home as well, and uh, get ready to uh, obtain your certification. So here, um, there are some um, questions on drafting, two questions, simple on drafting, but the major questions are uh, question three all the way to... Um, six as you can see which are on part design making it parametric and modifying it and the answer to these questions are already written at the end so if you uh, get the answers you can compare them against the correct ones right so for example it answers the first and second question clipping view and breakout view uh, if you want to know about drafting in CATIA, please watch the videos I published on drafting in CATIA. But you can, uh, for example, see it says, uh, which view should I use to create view B from view A? The answer is clipping view, right? Because here I'm clipping this view A and just keeping the part inside this pentagon or polygon. So that's a clipping view. And then here is like a 3D cut. So... You are cutting on view A and you draw your um, rectangle here and provide some depth. And then it goes and show you the cut on this object. So this is called broke, uh, broke out, uh, breakout view. And so again, if you want to know more about these different views, uh, I recommend you watch those videos. So what I want to focus today is the part design. So problems three and four, they want you to create this sketch and then uh, provide the depth of C. So there are three parameters that you have to modify in uh, future problems, Pro parameters A, B, and C. And the values for them are given here for problem three. They are 81, 57, and 43. And the system here is MMGS, okay? So... The material you are going to apply is steel, and then it asks you what is the overall mass of the part in grams, which one of these, okay? So the goal is to create this sketch here. And uh, we are going to go to Katia. And then we are going to go to mechanical design part design. And we are going to create this. But first thing first, I want to create the um, change the system to MMGS, create these three parameters, and then later when I draw this sketch, I use parameters A, B, and C, and C for the extrusion, A and B in the sketch, and make my design parametric. So when I change A, B, C, my part uh, will change. And that's another one of the intricacies in this exam is if there is any small mistake when you make this part, okay, anything small, even wrong, then when you come and try to calculate the mass of the part, it's not going to be any of these. And they only accept your, uh, uh, in this case, it's multiple choice, so it's not a big deal. You probably choose the one that is the closest to what you got in Katia. And but you have to pay attention that your number with one of these numbers should not be more than one percent off. Now the problem comes here that if your number is not exactly one of these, then in the next step that you change A, B, and C, 
In the next step, they ask you to type the mass. Instead of choosing from four options, they type. They ask you to type the mass here. And if your number is 1% off from the number they have in the memory of the testing uh, software, you are going to get a uh, false answer for this. And you're going to lose lots of credit. OK, so the important thing is the first problem you get it exactly equal to one of these so in the step number two you have a smaller chance of your number being more than one percent off okay so there is not too much room for error if you type in the number five ten percent off from the actual answer you definitely get uh, zero for that problem and you're going to fail the exam okay and pay attention that there are only uh, four problems here and the exam is similar to that so it's not like so many problems it's enough to make a mistake in one or at most two of them to easily fail the exam okay so here I'm gonna put this on my second monitor that you are not seeing but you clearly see what I'm about to do there are lots of geometric and dimensional constraints and some of them are even a little bit uh, unclear as I go through a sketch I'll show you but I need to make this and uh, let's get this started here. So first thing first, I want to go and change my system of units to MMGS. So we go to tools and we go to options and we go here to, you see under option general, go down to parameters and measurements and then we go to units and the system is mmgs so you need to make sure that your mass is in grams that it is your time is in second good but the distances are in millimeters you see right now length is an in inch so go ahead and change it to what to mils okay so now your system looks like mmgs we don't care about the rest of them if it ever asks you for area or something then it should be millimeter squared. So if you want, you can go ahead and change that. You see it's square meters. You can change it to square millimeters and so on and so forth. Or if there is a volume, you can do that as well. If there is a pressure, then it should be Newton per millimeter squared or megapascal. So like this, correct? That's what you have in the MMGS and so on. So you can change any of these all sorts of uh, physical entities that you have. And, uh, but the main one is really the millimeter for now. So uh, this is for changing the units. Now you need three parameters, A, B, and C. And to create parameters, you click on this FX, insert a formula, or you go under tools, correct? And um, you should be able to get the formula up here. And here you can create formulas. You can also create parameters. So I need three parameters. And my parameter should be of type length. So I go here and change it to uh, length. And I say create one for me. And instead of calling it length one, I call it A. In the first problem, it asked me to make it 81 mil. So here we go, 81 mil, and then I enter, and there we go. I got my A added as a parameter. Then I say make another one. This one is B, and the value for it is 57. And then I have another one, which is C, and that guy is 43. Please watch the video I made on parametric design in Katia if you forgot how to make parameters and equations in Katia. So here I added A, B, and C. And pay attention that these three parameters I made, you do not see them right now on the spec tree, okay? Unless you activate them. Now in, in this video, before this video, I already activated them so you can see them right here. But uh, if, the, if this uh, tab parameters is not activated in the tools options, then you have to go and activate it so you can see. But now I can, if I want, I can just double click on A and type the new parameter value as problem four, five, and six want me to do it, okay? So I don't need to go, or I can go to tools formula and then click on them and change their value here, but I can easily right now access them. And I told you, 
that when you create parameters, if you want to see them on the tree, as I said, by default, you don't. You have to go to Tools, Options, and then you have to go under uh, Infrastructure, Part Infrastructure, and then Display. And make sure these parameters, constraints, parameters, and relations, these three are checked. By default, they are not. But when you check them, you see everything, every equation, every parameter you make on the spec tree. Okay, so please refer to those videos. Now, here, I'm going to create the sketch. And uh, here, I choose my YZ plane and go to sketch. And I start creating the sketch. Now, which part of this sketch do you start with? It is completely up to you. But I try to position everything with respect to a fixed reference, let's say origin. And it's up to you to put origin at one of these corners. Here, there is no limitation where to put the part. So you can put it anywhere you want. And maybe I choose the center of the circle to be my origin. Some people might choose this corner or this corner to be origin. Doesn't matter. As I said, positioning the part uh, is not going to affect anything. So here I put my center of the circle at origin. This uh, helps making my sketch fully defined faster. So here we go. We start at origin and uh, the dimension. And one other thing is, as I told you in the sketch design video in Katia, uh, if you start with dimensions that are completely off from the actual dimensions, and later try to scale down or scale up some parts of the sketch, the rest of the sketch is not going to be scaled up properly. And so your sketch is going to be off so badly and will become completely distorted. So you have to do lots of correction to get it right. So my suggestion is this. The first few things that you make, make sure their dimensions are right. Don't leave the dimensioning for later when everything is done start creating the dimension right off the bat. So here, the dimension of this guy is 14 mil diameter. You see right now it's 59. So I'm doing it a lot bigger than when it should be. And so when I make it 14, then I have an idea of how big I should draw the rest of the lines, okay? So that gives me some good idea. And now I start with the profile. And right now I can go anywhere that I want, and that is okay. Or I can turn on a snap to the point so that I can only click on the grid points. As I said, it's not super critical. So you have something like this that is a vertical line and it goes from below the x-axis to above the x-axis, something like that. Then you have some small angle, then you have some straight line. On the bottom, you have, again, another straight line like this. You have a big straight line like that. And here, all I'm trying to do is first draw the straight portions, and then the rest of it, which are a bunch of arcs tangents to each other and to the lines, I'll do it later. So first, I just do the straight portions. So... Uh, if I come here now, I have a um, straight line again like this, small portion. You see, and Katia is adding some automatic constraint, like making that parallel to that one. Maybe you don't need that. And then you have this, and then you have something like this and this okay so this is what you have and you have to make sure these constraints that it is adding for me okay that it doesn't add extra constraint you see it added these two lines to be perpendicular they are not really so let me add dimensions so i double click here so i don't have to click on it every single time and first, I add my dimensions before anything else. So this angle is uh, 45 degrees. 
the same thing for this guy this angle is also 45 degrees then I have the dimensions between top and bottom line is 32 and then um, I also have a 7 and a 14 so this guy from here to end of this is 14 then you have a 7 which is this guy but you see here when you click on this line it shows it diagonally but what I want is the horizontal dimension of it being 7 so I right click here and say horizontal measure direction uh, sorry vertical measure direction and this guy should be 7 okay and uh, I have something similar for the bottom portion. You see right now I modified something and clearly there is the distortion here. So before I do the rest of the dimensioning, I try to fix this a little bit, okay? As I said, this part is rather sensitive. So um, that's why I insist that you do the... Um, dimensioning in the beginning so this is also vertical and this guy is also seven there we go and i have another 14 and 14 is the distance between these two so it's this distance this has to be 14 okay and uh, there is a 14 as well between this one and this one. There we go. Correct. So here you can see these different dimensions and now as you can see this sketch is almost fully defined except for the end of this which is not clear how far it goes okay but uh i used all the dimensions that i could find for you and added all of these 14 so there are three 14s that i added there are two sevens a 32 there are two 45 degree angles and uh that's it now let's add the rest of the dimensions so the distance between these two is uh, 19. Then I have the overall height of the part to be equal to B. So from here to here, this guy, you see this one is equal to, and can I say this is equal to B, right? So you see this, this is just some number, but this number, I have to make sure this number is equal to B, right? So it's just a single number. So I can click on this and go to FX and force this dimension, correct, to be equal to what? To be equal to B. I say for this dimension, add a formula for me, and that dimension is equal to uh parameters so you go to parameters and instead of all you just say length and then choose b here and force it to be equal to b as you can see and again as you can see here my sketch is distorted so you need to move these points and uh, fix it a little bit okay and then the overall length of the part from left to right side is a so from here to here this length is also equal to a 
So we have to go and add the formula for this and say this is equal to uh, parameter A. Okay, it says type Boolean. So it seems like this is wrong. I do it again. Made a mistake here. So that's this dimension. I want to add the formula. I want parameters of type length. And then I set it equal to A. And again, the sketch is uh, wrong. And the um, as you can see here, the shape is completely different now because of uh, changing this dimension here, right? This A. So uh, we need to do a small repair here. And um, let's see if we can bring this point forward. Yes, something like that, okay? So quite sensitive, as I said, and you have to be careful. So I have added B and A. Now let's add some of the other linear dimensions we have, like uh, this distance from here to here, horizontally is 29. And then we have this angle to be 45 degrees. And then uh, this angle is not given, but instead the distances are given so from here to here this distance is 29 let's see what that one does okay good and this guy is quite higher like that probably uh, then this guy Vertically is five units. Then from this point to this point is vertically 24. All right. So we try to put as much dimension as we can before adding the arcs. And... Uh, so now, as you can see, I have added these linear dimensions, all of them, except for 19 and 29, which is for the center of this arc of radius 29. So now I go and draw this uh, arc here. Then I have another arc here with radius 5, and these two arcs are tangent. At this point, I have an arc with radius 19. Okay, and then here I have a line with angle 10 degrees. And that line at some point becomes tangent to this curve. Pay attention, this first portion of it is not a curve, it's a line. Otherwise, this 10 degree does not mean anything. Okay, so we have to add this small portion of the line and then connect them with radius, uh, arc of radius 19 and make it tangent. Okay, so I need one arc here, two arcs down there, and this small line. And again, I put it on my second monitor. As I said, we need a line here. And by the way, the zoom to area option is very useful. If you don't have it activated, I suggest uh, you add that here. So you have this one and then this one. With this guy being 10 degrees. The end point of it is not clear until we do that arc so now i go with three point arc which is this guy the two endpoints are known you just click on the third point and i click on this endpoint and this endpoint and i just put it somewhere like there now make sure here i have a tangency so i say these two and then i add the tangency for them okay and then I provide the radius of 19 in here. Okay, it looks like that. Now, you see, it looks like it is completely defined. 
Is everything is green for the top part? Yes, as far as I can see. And then here you need to add some arcs. So this end point, uh, I guess, has to be a little bit shorter. But then I go with my two uh, three point arcs. So one of them is something like this, and the other one is something like that. Now, as you can see clearly, the tangency here and here exists, and that is very important. And also, the center of this arc is on that line, so I choose that and this one and make sure they are coincident. And then uh, the length of here is short, and then I need to provide some radii. This radius is 5. And this one is 29. Okay, now as you can see, still not fully defined, and that's because of the center. Okay, the center, there are dimensions about it, and uh, it's the 19 height. So if you click on the center uh, from this bottom, it has to be 19 units. And now, as you can see, everything is uh, fully defined here. Okay, everything looks green to me, as far as I can see. And um, you can see that profile matches this shape. Okay, if you see big visual discrepancies, even though you put all the numbers in, I would double check it. So now that I got all this profile done, I go ahead and um, exit the workbench and then I try to extrude it. Okay, and I need to provide some number here, this 20. And I need to make sure this 20 is equal to C. So I say edit formula, you see, I right click on that depth and this depth should be equal to c so i say parameter of type length and then i make sure it is equal to c and you see it's 43 and it's grayed out which means it is now determined by the formula and one thing that i want to make sure you always do is keep saving your files okay do not do everything and then save because if for any chance your CATIA crashes, you're going to have to start again and this exam does not allow for such a loss of time, okay? It's quite tight in terms of time. Don't mess with uh, uh, your chance of answering everything and don't make mistakes. And so go ahead and save it as problem number one or in this case is problem number three so you might want to call it q3 okay and now you have to apply uh, iron so with the part selected you go to material and go under metals and select i i i guess it was steel uh, yes it's steel sorry so we go with steel and you see now the material is applied, so I assume everything is in place. Now it says, what is the mass in grams? So then we go to uh, measure inertia and measure the inertia of this part, which as you can see, it is 934.78. Okay. And if you look here, let me put them side by side if I can. So as you can see, this number is 934.78, and this number is 934.78. So you see, I got it exactly, and the answer is the last one, okay? So make sure here, in this first try, you get it exactly right, okay? So now I'm happy that at least I got my number correct. Now, in the next problem, it is asking you to change something, and 
see the effect of that on the mass again. So if you now go to the next problem, which is problem number four, it is asking you that everything is the same. You change the dimensions to 84, 59, and 45 for ABC and measure the mass of the part again. And this time you're going to type it. You're not going to compare it against a multiple choice. So you better be very accurate. So let's go ahead and change parameters A, B, and C. And that's the good thing about parametric is now all, I don't need to go back to my sketch and change everything or to my uh, extrude. All I need is I go down to my relay, uh, parameters, I'm sorry, and uh, double click on A. You see it's 81. You want it to make it 84. And then B is uh, 57. Make it 59. Finally, C was uh, 43. Ask you to make it 45. And you see the problem is updated. Okay, if the uh, update is not there, you can always make sure you do a control U, but now it is clearly updated. And now if I go and measure the mass again of the part, make sure you click here on the part in the tree. Do not click on a surface or anything because then it might measure the properties of that surface or on that feature. Make sure you directly click on the parts, right, this gear from the tree. And as you can see, the mass of the part is 102709. 10 to any 7, 0, 9. So that's what you should type in here, 10 to any 7, 0, 9. Now, if you go ahead and look at the answers, you see 10 to any 7.09. Okay, so that's what you are supposed to get, and I got that. Okay, good. So now you can call this problem number uh, four, but you don't have to because that's the same as three. Now, in the next problem, which is uh, number five, it is asking you to apply some modifications to the part. Okay. And at the same time, change the values of A, B, and C again. So not only do you change A, B, C, now you have to apply a bunch of things. What are they? One of them is this pocket in the back. One of them is this pocket here. And one of them is this pocket down below. So there is one pocket here, one pocket there, and one pocket there. There are three pockets. And the dimensions for these pockets are shown in these views and these uh, front, top right, and the section views. Okay, so you have three things to cut. One of them for which the profile is here. One of them for which the profile is here. The depth of them is also given. These are the depth of those cuts. And the other one, the profile of it is basically this uh, shape with this arc of radius 41. And the depth of that from uh, is 24, but it's 12 units from the back plane. So you have to start doing this cut. So let's just start with this one, maybe. Right? As you can clearly see, the depth of this cut is the same as this one. And they are both 19 units, right? You can see this 19 for the bottom and this 19 for the front. They are both cut 19 units in. So let's go ahead and first cut this one. The distance, these lines and curves, they all come from the boundary of the original sketch. The only new thing is this vertical line, which is 52 units from the right edge. The rest of it you can get by projection. And before anything else, I would first change A, B, and C, and then I go and modify my sketch. Okay, so first, let's change A, B, and C. It says make this 86. Make B to be 58. And make C to be 44. Okay, so first change those. And now start doing the pockets. So I go on this... Um, plane and I have to do two cuts one here one there and since they both have the depth of 19 maybe I can draw the sketch of both of them and cut both of them if I can so as you saw it has this edge this one this one this one this one and this one so I first select them and then I use project 3d curve okay 
and I okay it first. Now they are yellow because they are depending on the original curves. But later, you see, I am going to right click on them. And as I told you, I'm going to isolate them so they are independent from the original thing. But before that, I first add that vertical line, which is 52 units from the right hand side. So I draw a vertical line like this and make sure the distance from that to this right edge is 52. Okay, and as you can clearly see, you don't need to project the rest of it because actually you have to get rid of these two portions. Right now, since they are yellow, you cannot modify them. They depend on the original thing unless you choose them and then what? You isolate them, especially the, these two vertical, the two top and bottom lines that you want to trim. So I right click here and then say isolate them. Now they're all blue, uh, sorry, uh, white, and they are. you can modify them. Now I want to get rid of this portion of this line and that portion, so that is a closed sketch. And for that, I can use my trim tools, right, which are uh, should be here, right? So I have the trim tool here, the break tool, and the quick trim. So if I click on this quick trim and then click on this line, you see, or this one, if I click on it, you see, it got rid of that. And if I click on this one, uh, let's do it again. Here we go. Right? So it got rid of those dangling parts. And now to make sure this is something I can use and it's a closed sketch, I go to Tools, Sketch Analysis, and make sure it is closed. Once it's closed, it's good to do whatever you want to it. So uh, that is this part here that I made. Now, again, since the depth of these two pockets are 19, let's do both of them in one uh, cut extrude. And then I uh, need to do this cut. So I do that one as well. Then we go with this pocket. And by the way, there is also this new hole here. This new true hole with radius of with the diameter of uh, 11 and this 14, 14 offsets from the top right corner. So we also need to make that. So actually there are four new pockets, not three. So uh, first let's do this. So it is using again the boundaries and a horizontal line with distance 19. So it should be, this line should be collinear with this original line because the distance, if you look from this original line also to the bottom is 19. So if this guy is also 19 from the bottom, that line and that line are collinear. Okay, so I need this profile also to be selected for uh, cutting. And so for that, I'm going to choose the, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I project them. Then I use my horizontal line and I draw some line like this. And uh, now we'll check, make sure the distance from here to here is 19. It should be. You see, it's redundant because when I made this line tangent to that curve and this other line was tangent to the curve, so it means they are collinear and the distance should be 19. So if I add that, I'm going to make it over constrained and I'm not going to do that. So that line is perfectly good. So now I'm going to uh, select these guys and isolate them. And now it is time for me to get rid of this dangling portion of this as well. And here we go. So this is my other profile. Again, I go and make sure that I have two closed profiles. I do. Now I get out of here and it is time to do the cut. Now, if I go ahead and say cut extrude and then provide 19 depth, let's see if it gives me what I want. And I guess it does, right? So you clearly see I got these two cuts that I wanted very well, right? So two of the pockets I have done with one sketch and one extrude. I save it. Then I start doing the uh, circular hole all the way and that uh, other curve here. So let's first do this circular hole, which has a diameter of... Um, 11 and 14, 14 offsets. So here we go. 
it is 11 and then 14 and 14. This is one. This is another. Good. So this is good. And now I cut it through all, which is to the last. There we go. This is good. Again, I save it. And now it is time to do this uh, last cut, which has this profile. And it's 24 units, but the sketch of it should not be on the back plane, should be on a plane that is 20 mil in front of the back plane. So I need first to create a plane here on this edge, draw this sketch, and then cut it forward 24 units. Okay, so I need a new plane here. And for that, I go to my plane command. Okay. It should be one of these toolbars on the right side. If you don't see it, you can add that toolbar. But it is typically in this, um, I guess it was advanced feature base. And you click on it and uh, then click on this back plane. Make it 12 units, reverse direction. There we go. I got my plane now. And I can go to sketch. And... Uh, now, whatever I draw, I draw it on this plane. So what I need is I need to project this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I do that. Then I need to draw a three-point arc again, where the two ends of it are on these two guys. One here, one here, and then the other one, it has some center somewhere like there. Okay, now the center of this has to be collinear with this line. And uh, coincident. And then the offset of it is 36 from this bottom endpoint. Make sure it is vertical. And the radius of the curve is... Uh, 41. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. Well, the center, the way I see it is, yeah, this 36 does not look correct to me. This has to come up like there. And this one cannot move freely. That's good. So I have to do the order one more time. But before that, you know, I let me trim it first and isolate these guys. So here we go. Isolate. Do the fast trim. One here, one there. And now I make this point from this guy to be 36 units. Okay, and you see clearly it is not happy with it. Okay, so you have to be careful of, so maybe I go back and not isolate, uh, not isolate this, so I cannot modify them easily. Let me first do this. Or, you know what, let me... That 41 is good. The location of this is also good. So... Let's do this. You have to be patient. And find what you want, 36. And now it does move that point for some reason and then make it green. Which is very weird. Let's see if I can move this point up. 
Oh, I see why. The problem with what I did is this 36, the reference, it's not from the bottom to the center. It is from the bottom of it to the top edge. So it is this guy. And I'm making that mistake. This is 36. There we go. Now I can isolate these guys. Do the trimming. So one here and then one there. Okay, and now make sure that again your sketch is closed. It is. Everything looks good to me. And now I'm going to cut this forward for uh, 24. What? Okay. Oh, that's because I'm up to last. 24, and then reverse direction, and then cut. Well, what happens? Last one. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Now we got everything in it. Dimension wise, feature wise, and everything. And now it says, uh, what is the mass again? So here we go. Let's go measure the mass. You see, it is uh, 60, 625.00, 625. So that's the number I got, 625. And now let's check the answers. There we go, 625.00. So I got it perfectly right again. And again, I'm going to save it, and then go for the next part of the problem, which is again something added. And for this part, now I have to, um, the material is the same, the dimensions are the same, everything is the same, except I have some feature now. And what is that feature? That feature is this new pocket here. What is this new pocket? This new pocket is kind of like a shell. It gives it a, a one mil thickness all around this part, but it's not uniform as you can see. It doesn't go uniform back, so you cannot use the shell command and I'll show you. So on this part, yes, it is gonna go inward for some uh, amount, but for this back, it goes all the way until there is 12 mil of material left. Okay, so the depth of the cut is not constant, although the shape of it is kind of constant. So you might be tempted to do it with the shell command, but I'll show you, it's not gonna do what you want. Okay, and I'll, I'll show you that, okay? But uh, being tempted to do it with shell will cause some problems. So first, let, let me do it with the shell so you can see what I mean. So first I go with the shell command and I click here and I leave one mil thickness. We're gonna get rid of that inside and boom, right? Now what's missing here? First of all, there is this portion of this guy left that shouldn't be, right? As you can look at this picture, there is nothing left here. That's one. Two, if you look here, this interior part of it is kind of messed up, right? Because as you can see, if I go ahead and cut it, because here it gave you cut. If you cut it from the top until the middle of this hole, this is what you would, what you should see, only the material in these areas, right? That's your cut. So now to make sure, I would go ahead and cut it, a cosmetic cut, and look at it and see whether it gives me what's the problem asked for it. And for that, let me get the cut out here. So, uh, here, okay, this dynamic section. And I click on it and you can see it here. And I can go ahead and reverse the order. <laughs> Right.
right i can look at it from different views make sure it is almost what i want so this has to go down a little bit up Right into a sink. It's almost at the center, I would say. It is, right? So, uh, let me make it almost flat. Yeah, it is at the center. Because we put the center of that circle to be origin, and this is here, this plane is at origin. So now, if I look at it from the top, this is the section area that you have. The green parts are the parts that there is solid material. And clearly, if you look at the solid material here versus here, you're losing all the thickness in the middle here and then all of that, right? Just look. It is going to make it all over shell, not just the area that you want. So clearly, this shell is not a good shell, okay? It's not the good command to use. So I go ahead and... Uh, turn it off. So you see I did not physically cut it. I just cosmetically cut it and now uh, You clearly see that the shell was not good. So let's go ahead and delete it and I suggest you do a cut extrude here Right, but pay attention that the first part of the cut extrude is this area for which you have to go forward until you only get one mil thickness left and then this part of it you do another cut extrude so do two separate cut extrudes and you have to know in each one how far you should go so this one you should go until there is one mil thickness left now how much is the thickness of this whole part here well if you look at the dimensions the total thickness of the part is 44 and then out of that 44, you have a 24 and a 12, which is 36. So 36 minus 44 is 8. So the thickness of this part is 8. And if you don't remember it, just go ahead and measure that, okay? You can simply go ahead and measure that, right? You go here and then uh, measure the distance between, or let's just say one of these, uh, so right now it's point to point, but of course you can change it. You see it's 8 mil and you need 1 mil thickness left, so you have to cut it for 7 mil. So let's go ahead on this plane and we select all of the boundaries of it like that. And uh, other than the circle, of course, and we can project them all. Again, if you don't want this circle, you can delete it. Oh, you should not select the circle. So that's fine. Let me do it again here. Let me unselect this. Uh, let's see. No. Okay, then I have to do it individually if it is about to uh, not be cooperative. And that's okay. Just there is this small portion here left. Now I got it all. Now, I don't really need this one. I need one mil offset from that, okay? That's what I need to cut. And for that, actually, you do not really need this. I mean, I can select all of this, right? And then create offset of one mil. And you know where the offset is, right? That's here. But uh, you could just do this whole thing without even projecting it. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here, I'm going to select these boundaries, but not project them, just select them. And then here, I go down to the offset command and say, uh, let's see if it allows me one mil. Ah, it didn't. So maybe I have to go line by line. And uh, I can do these yellow ones as well, but I'm hoping it cooperates. So uh, if it doesn't, that's okay. I project it. Then I go to one mil. Yeah, now it is allowing it. Good. Okay, now it is allowing it. 
the only thing is that uh, one mil offset okay is that one mil here so I want this offset to be one mil and you see it does not change everything else accordingly so you can either change everything accordingly or uh, when in the beginning it is asking you for offset let's see if we can do it in the dimension toolbar okay it does not undo it okay so I selected this I go to offset and now let's look at this dimension toolbar space toolbar so here it is asking me for some offset and if I go inside and now type in 10 uh, 1 sorry now there we go I got what I wanted so if you type that number because if you click and it fixes the sketch then you cannot go ahead and change all of them at the same time but if you type that number in that window the sketch tools toolbar you're good now these yellow lines you don't want anymore so you can make them for construction element or anything right or uh, you should probably be even able to delete them because this white sketch does not really now depend on that yellow one so it should be okay to just delete it and keep the white sketch make sure it is closed it is and now you can go in and cut it for seven mil okay there we go so now you got this part done and what you need to do next is to now do this part this shape here you have to do this part and you have to go all the way until it is 12 mil to the back plane so 12 out of the whole weather 44 it is what it is 32 so you have to cut this 32 units from the front plane now if you start your sketch on this plane which is already 7 mil back right so instead of going 32 it's 32 minus 7 so you have to only cut 25 units or you can say up to surface and then select the surface for the end of that cut extrude if you don't want to do all these calculations but just trying to tell you what you need to cut so that's this shape sketch these two straight lines that arc that arc and this small straight line again leave one mil thickness off and then go ahead and cut it so here what I need I need to do a sketch on this plane and as you can see some of the walls are already there like this wall is there this wall is there correct and um, if I just keep continuing that wall and then this one and this one and that arc that I'm going to make and go in for uh, that uh, 25 mil I should be okay so what I need is I need this one this one this one a little bit of this one and you see there is this small portion of this left correct you can see that here this part so make sure it is selected i would project them first good so now i got everything and then now i need that arc now what is that arc that arc is the same as this arc basically that we had that's this arc but one mil offset so if i can find this original arc i use for that pocket one mil offset down will be this new arc okay so what i need is i want to be able to see that arc which is behind this plane it's invisible right now but if I go and make this uh, shading uh, wireframe, I should be able to see that arc. Now, with respect to this, I need one mil offset. So I click here and I come down there and make sure that 
this offset I have here is one mil and I enter that. Okay, so now I got that offset I wanted. Now I can move it back to regular shading with edges. Now I have to go and uh, do the uh, isolation and then the trimming. So here I select everything. And let's see if I can isolate them now. And the reason is I have selected too many things that I shouldn't. There we go. So now I should be able to isolate. There we go. And now I'm going to trim this here. Let's double click on it here, here, and here. And again, make sure it is closed. It is. So now exit. Put it on the right size and right direction. And now I need to cut this. How far? As I said, 25 mil. Or instead of dimension, you can say up to surface. And then it says which surface? You say this surface. Now it says, uh, I don't think I can do that. Why is it? So uh, if I say up to plane, and for plane, I choose this plane. Let's see. There we go. So uh, it did that job for me. It did the cuts. There is no empty parts. Again, I can go and do the dynamic sectioning and uh, reverse the order of this. Correct. Make sure from the side it is correct. It's not tip. It's not tilted. It's a little bit tilted, but not too bad. Something like this. Look at it from the top. If you see these areas of correct section, which clearly it is, then you should be fine. Okay. But this is this problem is the most difficult problem in this uh, certification exam practice and now again I save it again it says what's the mass so let's go ahead and measure the mass and you see it's 430.39 and you see 430.39 okay so this way you can do some practice to prepare yourself for Katia certification exam part design once you pass this you're going to be katia you're going to get katia associate certification and then in the next video i'll show you how to do the assembly and in another one i'll show you how to do surface if you take one of them just not both of them just one of them with part design then you will get katia professional certificate okay so thank you for your attention see you in the next lecture